When it comes to rap music, the tagline has been, keep it real, yo. But what is real? Music that glorifies senseless violence and destruction can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's time to admit, y'all, there's nothing romantic about an early senseless death. The recent murder of one of hip-hop's biggest stars inspired the number one song of the summer, I'll Be Missing You, and forever changed the life of the industry mogul and artist who made it, Sean Puff Daddy Combs. Through my career, I've gone through a lot. I've seen a lot of tragedies. I've seen a lot of death. This is Sean Puff Daddy Combs' biggest hit, a eulogy to his best friend who was murdered last March. But success doesn't mean what it used to for him. He's a changed man, and his struggle to deal with the loss may well mark a turning point in rap music. After a while, the business side of it and the money side of it, it, it just doesn't mean nothing to me anymore. Because at the end of the day, when the chips is down, the room is like empty. You can have millions of dollars and platinum records all over your walls and Oscars in your cabinet. And be stressed. And be stressed, you know what I'm saying? I want to be happy. That's one of my dreams right now, is at the end of the day, to, to be happy. Death has haunted Puff Daddy from the beginning of his career. At age 21, an event he organized in Harlem ended when nine people in the massive crowd were trampled to death. Since then, too many of his friends and associates in the rap industry have died. But if Puff Daddy, at age 26, has seen more than his share of suffering, he has also seen more success. For it to be right, it just, I'm real particular about what I say. Today, this hyperactive CEO from Mount Vernon, New York, runs his own hugely successful record label, Bad Boy. His income and his fans number in the millions. I realize that I have the power to make a lot of things cool. I have the power to set trends. One of the biggest producers of R&B and rap, he and other artists on his label have dominated the charts. But Puff Daddy's begun to question the message that some rap sends. Don't push us, cause we're close to the edge. What do you think is the effect of violent lyrics on the minds of young people? I think that it's wrong to um, glamorize something that you've gone through, like it's cool and it's all right. Like I had a lyric in one of my rhymes that just about how my father was killed. You know what I'm saying? My father murdered, massacred, slain. One shot took half of his brain. I recaptured the pain. 23 years, three when it happened. 26 now, still I can't stop the tears. You know, that's... That's a lyric that you you feel in the intensity of my father getting his brains blown out, but it's not glorified. He had the gun, he should have packed it, cocked it, extra clips in my pocket, so I could reload and explode. But a lot of the music Puff Daddy produced was violent. Some of the harshest came from a talented rapper called Notorious B.I.G., also known as Biggie Smalls. Before Puff Daddy discovered him, Biggie was selling crack. Bad boy is how life is and Biggie was the hard side of life. A few years later, he was selling millions of records. Puff Daddy taught Biggie what he needed to make it in the business. Biggie gave Puff Daddy instant street credibility. They quickly became more than just partners. They became friends and soulmates. What did Biggie mean to you? Biggie was like my heart, you know what I'm saying? He was one of the only people besides my mother and a couple of other people I've met, like maybe a handful of people that really cared about me. But as Biggie's career took off, the violence of what some call gangster rap exploded in a fusillade of bullets and a flurry of headlines. In September 1996, Tupac Shakur, one of rap's brightest and most controversial stars, was murdered. Some claim he was a casualty of war between his West Coast label Death Row and Puff Daddy's Bad Boy. 
Six months later, in what many believed was a retaliation for Tupac's murder, Biggie was gunned down after leaving a party in Los Angeles. Puff Daddy ran to the aid of his fallen friend. You got too much living to do. Too much unfinished business. Man, after Biggie's death, I was dead too. And it was just a situation where I, I didn't want to go on no more. I didn't want to keep on doing this. So I had to reevaluate. Puff Daddy delayed the release of his highly anticipated album, Hell Up in Harlem. He changed the name to No Way Out and reworked the content to reflect a less violent, more personal perspective. I've definitely made records in the past to where I could listen to them today and be like, yeah, that right there glorified some violence right there. And that right there is not going to have a positive impact on my son or anybody's kids. It's not just Puff Daddy. In the streets, the fans are also calling for change and demanding peace. Rap is heading for a sudden change. We're about to enter a new, a new generation. I'd rather hear like peaceful songs like the one that Puffy wrote. I think people are finally realizing that they're killing each other. I believe people are looking for a more positive message in rap. It, do it doesn't make anything better. It's just being done over and over again, and it's time for a change. Positive rap songs by Puff Daddy and other artists are dominating the charts. God's Property, a gospel rap group, had a number one hit this summer. You said that you want to take rap in a new direction. What direction is that? I wanted to make sure that we start instilling in the producers and the artists that it's important to put out the real out there, but at the same time, it's also important to live up to your responsibility as somebody that has to do something good. Everybody has a responsibility that you have to try to have a positive input into like society. One more time, put the peace sign in the air for me. And on the count of three, everybody say peace. One, two, three. Thanks to Puffy Combs, every weekend at Columbia University, young people are able to study computers and other subjects, as well as attend summer camp. Creating a safe place for young people is essential to help them reach their potential. And they have the potential for many things. For instance, how does an 8-year-old become an 18-year-old with criminal tendencies? Turns out there are warning signs that we aren't always able to read. In Cleveland, there's a group that's figured it out. <laughs> 